Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Gene Hirschholt starring as Dr. Christian in an episode from January 16, 1938, The Flood. And we thank you for tuning in on this Sunday, 16th day of January. This is the uh, 16th day of the year, of course. 350 days left till we get to 2023. Happy birthday, Vermont. Well, Vermont declared its independence from New York on this date in 1777. John C. Fremont appointed governor of the New California Territory in 1847. In 1883, the Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act established civil service. In 1900, the Senate accepted the Anglo-German Treaty of 1899, in which the UK renounced its claim to the Samoan Islands. Ernest Shackleton's expedition on this date in 1909 found the magnetic South Pole. The U.S. ratified the 18th Amendment on this date in 1919, authorizing prohibition in the U.S. one year after the ratification. The famous jazz concert by the Benny Goodman Orchestra and guests took place at Carnegie Hall in 1938, the first jazz performance in that venue. In 1945, Adolf Hitler moved into his underground bunker, and in 1968, the Youth International Party founded the Yippies. In 1979, the Shah of Iran fled Iran with his family and relocated to Egypt. People have just spontaneously swarmed into the streets, all of them shouting, the Shah has escaped. They are drawing on cars, holding up pictures of Ayatollah Khomeini. It is a moment of great joy in Tehran. And it was on this date in 1991, the U.S. went to war with Iraq, the beginning of the Gulf War. Some may ask, why act now? Why not wait? The answer is clear. The world could wait no longer. Sanctions, though having some effect, showed no signs of accomplishing their objective. Sanctions were tried for well over five months, and we and our allies concluded that sanctions alone would not force Saddam from Kuwait. While the world waited, Saddam Hussein systematically raped, pillaged, and plundered a tiny nation. No threat to his own. He subjected the people of Kuwait to unspeakable atrocities. While the world waited, Saddam sought to add to the chemical weapons arsenal he now possesses an infinitely more dangerous weapon of mass destruction a nuclear weapon. And while the world waited, while the world talked peace and withdrawal, Saddam Hussein dug in and moved massive forces into Kuwait. While the world waited, while Saddam stalled, more damage was being done to the fragile economies of the third world, the emerging democracies of Eastern Europe, to the entire world, including to our own economy. While the world waited, Saddam Hussein met every overture of peace with open contempt. While the world prayed for peace, Saddam prepared for war. Tonight, 28 nations, countries from five continents, Europe and Asia, Africa and the Arab League, have forces in the Gulf area standing shoulder to shoulder against Saddam Hussein. These countries had hoped the use of force could be avoided. Regrettably, we now believe that only force will make him leave. President George Herbert Walker Bush, the son of Bill Cosby, Ennis Cosby, shot and killed on this date in 1997 in a failed robbery attempt. I set the coffin down over the hole, and I said, um, I said, we now want to give praise to... Praise to God for allowing us to, to know him. Not, not for giving 
him to us, but just letting us know him. Ennis was 28 and Cosby's only son. President Clinton awarded former President Teddy Roosevelt a posthumous Medal of Honor on this date in 2001 for his service in the Spanish-American War. It was on this date in 2003, the final flight of the Space Shuttle Columbia. It would disintegrate 16 days after today in 2003. And in 2007, Senator Barack Obama launched his bid for the White House. Passing away on this date, the founder of Marshall Field and Company, Marshall Field, criminal mob Barker, actress Carol Lombard, conductor Arthur Toscanini, the creator of the Chipmunks, Ross Bagdasarian Sr., Lurch, Ted Cassidy, uh, also Ron Carey, remember him from the Barney Miller show, uh, Benny Parsons, race car driver and commentator, singer-songwriter, saxophonist Jimmy Castor, the Jimmy Castor Bunch, Dear Abby, Pauline Phillips, Eugene Cernan, the captain, pilot, and astronaut, and record producer and songwriter Phil Spector, who passed away a year ago today. Among birthdays today, the inventor of the Zamboni, Frank Zamboni, actor-singer Ethel Merman, baseball player Dizzy Dean, also Carl Karcher, the founder of the Carl's Jr. hamburger chain, Uh, Susan Sontag, writer, also Celine Dion's husband and manager, Rene Angelini, also singer Alia, uh, who uh, died in 2001 at a very young age of a plane crash. Happy birthday number 87 to racer A.J. Foyt. Singer-songwriter Ronnie Millsap is 78. Singer-songwriter Jim Stafford is 78. Talk show host Dr. Laura Schlesinger is 75. Director John Carpenter, 74. Debbie Allen, 72 today. Dancer, choreographer. Uh, Smooth operator Sade, 63. From En Vogue, Maxine Jones is 60. From Charles in Charge, Josie Davis, 49. And model Kate Moss is 48. Those some of the people who celebrate the 16th day of January is their birthday. If this happens to be your birthday... Hi. We're the four freshmen, and we just want to say happy birthday to you. We head back 84 years on this Sunday to January 16th, 1938. Gene Hirschhold starring as Dr. Christian in The Flood. I'm Wyatt Cox. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. Here's some great news. If you missed the deadline to sign up for health insurance, or if, like a lot of people, you just have a plan you're not happy with, you still have a choice. It's called MediShare. It's a Christian healthcare sharing program. There are more than 400,000 members now, and they love it. In fact, MediShare has double the customer satisfaction rate compared to that of health insurance. And MediShare really is the gold standard when it comes to healthcare sharing. It's been around more than 25 years. Members have shared more than $4 billion of each other's medical bills. Plus, MediShare is for you. It has saved its members billions by advocating on their behalf. Best of all, the typical savings for a family is around $6,000 a year. So if you think you're stuck with a high-cost health plan that doesn't have much to offer, think again. MediShare has a 98% customer satisfaction rating, and you are invited to be part of it. Call now. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Thanks for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater on your favorite station. And we step back this hour, 84 years, January 16th, 1938, an Sunday afternoon episode of Dr. Christian starring Gene Hirschhold and The Flood. From Hollywood, California, we bring you Chapter 11 in the Chronicles of River's End. The star of the show, Gene Hirschholt, in his greatest of all roles. The title of the show, Dr. Christian. The sponsor of the show, the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline. And 
and so to today's story of Dr. Paul Christian. As the scene opens, it is 7 o'clock in the evening, and Dr. Christian and his friend Roy Davis, the druggist, are having a game of checkers in the doctor's office. Uh, let's see. Well, it looks as if you've got me this time, Doc, but uh, I'll make this move. <laughs> yes, Roy, I think I have. <laughs> well, at that, there are worse checker players than I am. Hmm? I said there are worse checker players than I am. Yes, I was just trying to think of one. <clears throat> well, that's a game of peace. Do you want to play off the tie? Sure, it's an hour and a half before the bus gets in. Might as well give you a good swimming. The, the <laughs> bus? Oh, didn't I tell you? Judy's back from a vacation in Hollywood. No, is she? Mm-hmm. Her train got into the city at 2 o'clock this afternoon. She phoned me and said that she was catching the 8.30 Riverside bus. Well, you're lucky to get her back. I thought you might stay out there and try to crash the movie. Ah, uh, uh, no, not Judy. Besides, she's got another little reason for coming back. In fact, it's not such a little reason at that. Six feet tall and weighs about 190 pounds. Jerry Turner? Mm-hmm, Jerry Turner. <laughs> They're not exactly engaged, are they? No, no, but I know the symptoms. And I'd say the case is already in its secondary stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it's incurable. There are a couple of swell kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, just a minute, Roy. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Christian. Judy will be home tonight. You're welcome. That phone's been going all day. Whatever you do, Roy, don't get up mixed up with the telephone. Now, let's see. Where were we? Your move. Oh, yes, yes. Well, if you have a notion that I'm going to... Wait a minute. Hello? Oh, hello, Susan. Yes, Judy will be back this evening. Oh, it's no trouble at all. <laughs> Goodbye. My move? Well, Roy, I'm going to show you a new trick. Instead of the... Ah. Judy will be home this evening. <laughs> I should think it would be a lot less trouble if you just put a notice in the paper. Well, the next time anyone asks me about Judy, I'm going to lose my temper and do something I'll be sorry for. <laughs> Your move? No, it's still yours. All right. I think I'll just let you... Doc, you heard from Judy? Uh, now, be careful, Doc. Don't. Don't shoot. Say, what new... He's young, Doc. Now, don't shoot him. Hey, what is this? Oh, hello, Jerry. Oh, it's just Roy's idea of a joke. A joke? Well, all I can say is it's a good thing for you, Jerry, that I got him calmed down. You should have seen him. Positively raging every time the phone rang. I tell you, when you interrupt Doc's checker game, he's... A... Now, wait. Now, <laughs> now, just keep cool. Don't get excited, Doctor. I'll answer. Hello? Well, this is Roy Davis speaking. Well, didn't Al attend to that? Okay, I'll be right over. Got to get back to the store. Mm, I want you, Roy, to leave telephones alone. See you in the morning, Doc. <laughs> All right, Roy. Come on, Jerry. Come on. Say, Dr. Christian, you got a pair of scissors handy? No, yeah, I, I think there's a pair in the drawer here. I want to cut the string on this box. Yeah. There you are. Thanks. Oh, my goodness. Where did you get such wonderful roses at this time of year? I had one of the bus drivers bring them from the city. Let's see, now where can I put them so Judy won't miss them when she comes to the office in the morning? Wait. I I'll get you a vase. I hope they'll keep until morning. Oh, I'll put some water in it. They'll keep. Hey, uh, how about putting them over here on the table, huh? No, 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 no. It'll put them right smack in center of her desk. Well, uh, not much at arranging flowers, but... Huh. They don't look so bad on the desk for that, huh? Well, she'll be crazy about them. Well, I guess I'd better beat it along home and change my clothes. Oh, what do you want to change your clothes for? You look all right the way you are. Oh, uh, not for an special occasion like this. Well... At night, I'm dolling up. <laughs> I'll see you at the bus station. Okay, but I warn you, you're only going to have a chance to say hello to her. <laughs> After that, she's mine. All right, Jerry. Say, uh... Say, uh, you're sure she'll see those roses on her desk all right, huh? Now, how can she miss them? She'll see them the first thing she does when she comes into the office in the morning. Well, don't mention Rose's tour tonight. Oh, no. No, I won't. I want her to be surprised when she comes in and... Dr. Christian! <laughs> Why, Judy! And Jerry. Judy. Oh, it's so good to see you, both of you. Well, it's it's good to see you, too, <laughs> we but We thought I... you were coming on the 8.30. Come on in, Bill. 
Dr. Christian, this is Mr. Conway. How do you do, Dr. Christian? Well, how do you do? And Mr. Conway, Jerry Turner. Ah, uh, how do you do? Uh, well, this is a surprise. Ah, uh, you don't know the half of it. We were going to meet you at the station. Well, I'm afraid that's my fault. Judy and I came east on the same train. I live in the city, you know, so I didn't see why she should have to wait for the bus when my car was right in the garage. Oh, you drove from the city? Uh Uh-huh, we just got here. Haven't even been home yet. Well, say, if Mr. Conway's in a hurry to get back, why... Oh, I'm taking him to the house to meet my family. Oh. Well, Judy, how does it seem to be back? Ah, grand. (laughs) Well, I don't know. Tomorrow morning the work starts. You'll be back at your, uh, desk. I love it. (laughs) Oh, but you don't need to be at your desk too early. Mm -hmm. Uh... Maybe you'd better sleep late and get a little rest. Rest? Oh, the way Bill and I have been going places, it's Hollywood that needs the rest. Oh, you, uh, you met Mr. Conway in Hollywood, huh? Yes. I oh, was... uh, did you see any of the picture studios? Oh, we spent a whole day at 20th Century Fox. So I'm shooting a picture and everything. Hmm. Uh, I don't suppose you saw any of the big executives at their desks. No, but we met some of the stars. Bill knows everybody in Hollywood. Well, not exactly everybody. My father has some connections out there which come in handy. Oh, perhaps you know my father, Dr. Christian. D.J. Conway? Senator Conway? Yes. Sure I do. That is, I I don't really know him, but I've heard a lot about him. (laughs) He's heard a lot about you, too. Ah, you bet he has. (laughs) In fact, I saw his picture in the paper just the other day, uh, sitting at his desk. (laughs) Well, we'd better be getting along or we'll be late for dinner. Good evening, Dr. Christian. I'll be seeing you again. Well, good evening. Good night. Say, uh, Judy, I'd sort of planned to... Goodbye, Turner. I'll be in early tomorrow, Dr. Christian, because I've got a big surprise for you. We return you now to Dr. Christian's office, where Judy is busily pounding the typewriter. Ah, sure is pouring. Turning warmer, too. Looks like the January thaw is here, all right. Oh, hasn't the rain let up yet? No, coming down harder than ever. All ready to go? Oh, I can't leave yet, Jerry. Dr. Christian isn't back. Why, it's after six o'clock. Where is he? He had to take a patient to the hospital. Rushed out of here this morning before I had a chance to say a word to him. Well, I'll stick around. He ought to be showing up pretty soon. But, Jerry, if it's a serious case, he may not be back until late. Oh, you can't go home by yourself in this rain anyway. And... You haven't any other plans, have you? No. Why? Well, I just thought I'd ask. Thought maybe your friend, Mr. Conway, might be around. Oh, he went back to the city last night. How'd you happen to meet him, anyway? Oh, I met him in Hollywood. Well, sure, I know, but but how? What'd he do? Just bust up to you and say hello? No, we were quite properly introduced, if that's what you mean. (laughs) Why, Jerry, you don't think he's important, do you? No, except in his own estimation. I don't think that's very funny. Well, of course, when it comes to being funny, I couldn't compete with him. You're not being very nice. Bill Conway's a friend of mine. When I was in Hollywood, he treated me marvelously. Okay, and... okay. I'm not saying anything against him. But if he's the kind of guy you'd fall for... Oh, who said anything about falling for Well, you him? certainly acted as if you had last night. I didn't either. Anybody's likely to be a little excited just getting home from a trip. And about those roses on my desk. Honestly, Jerry, I didn't notice them. Ah. Uh, I know you didn't, Judy. I... I'm sorry I brought it up. Well, maybe that's Dr. Christian now. Dr. Christian's office? Oh, hello. Uh, Yes. Yes, I didn't recognize your voice. No, I haven't had a chance to talk to Dr. Christian about it. Well, where are you now? Oh, you're kidding. (laughs) Of course you are. No, I can't. No, honestly. Well, all right. Oh, I'll be here till 9 o'clock. All right, I will. Goodbye. Who was that? Why? Who was it? Well, if you have to know, Jerry, it was Bill Conway. I thought so. And he's coming here, isn't he? Well, isn't he? What if he is? Giving me that stuff about not having any plans for this evening. Telling me he'd gone back to the city. Why, you've had a date with him all the time. You think I've been lying? You ought to know. No wonder you've been so anxious to get rid of me. Well, go ahead. Go out with your stuck-up tailor's dummy. See if I care. Ha <laughs> ha, you're just jealous because he has a lot of polish. Yeah, so is the kid that shines my shoes. Ah. But I'll tell you one thing. You better keep him away from me if you don't want him mussed up. Oh, look at the big, strong caveman. <laughs> one punch and he'll cave in. Is that so? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I've had just about... Tell you what, Joey. Tell us he's just leaving. You're doggone right, I <laughs> 
Well, what's the matter with Jerry? Why is he going in such a rush? Oh, he said something about having his shoes shined. Well, it'll get him all splashed up in this rain. Oh, I'm tired. Were you at the hospital all day? Till four o'clock this afternoon. Mrs. Morrow. Nothing serious. An appendectomy. Oh. So she's getting along all right. Oh, what about this afternoon's appointments? I canceled them all. No, I have better... here. I see. I'd better phone and find out if there's anything urgent. If there is, I can make some calls this evening. Oh, you're not going out on a night like this. Well, if I don't, who will? Oh, let them go till tomorrow morning. Yeah, I wish I could. Let's see the list. Now, uh, wait just a minute. Don't get up because I'm going to tell you my big surprise. Maybe a little bit of a shock. Hmm? Uh, you're through working day and night, catching your sleep when you can get it, being on the job 24 hours. It's finished. Finished? Yes. Everything's all settled. Next spring, you start a whole new life. Next spring, I start... Huh? Uh, Judy, you're, you're not... Um... You're not ill, are you? No, I'm perfectly well and perfectly sane. Well, then it must be me. There's something wrong with one of us. Well, if you only listen a minute, Bill Conway and I talked the whole thing over. That's the news I mentioned last night. It's all arranged for you to quit next spring. Well, from 84 years ago, January 16th, 1938, Dr. Christian on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater. And the news from 84 years ago today comes up next. Well, you've heard me talk about Michael Lindell, the inventor of my pillow, and how his pillow has given me a great night's sleep. He continues to roll out new offers on his products. His latest on the towel sets. Now, towels aren't something you think about. I never knew what I was missing until I tried the towels last year. You've all helped build my pillow into the incredible company it is today, and trust in Mike Lindell has given you a better night's sleep. Mike's now changing the game with his six-piece towel set, USA cotton, extremely absorbent, yet still providing that soft feel you look for in the towel. Two bath, two hand towels, two washcloths for a limited time, $39.95 using our promo code USA. It retails for over $100. Remember, all MyPillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the radio listener square, use this promo code USA to get this price of $39.99 on the towels. Or call 1-800-951-8175. Thank you for tuning in to Classic Radio Theater here on your favorite station, an episode of Dr. Christian. As it was originally broadcast January 16th, 1938, in the newspapers of that Sunday, 84 years ago, these were some of the headlines. Administration men hinted today they would put extreme pressure on the Senate to end the prolonged filibuster against the anti-lynching bill during the coming week and get on with President Roosevelt's program. Some senators, who preferred not to be quoted by name, said that night sessions, the leadership's major weapon against the filibuster, would be ordered. They predicted a showdown in which the anti-lynching bill either would be shelved or passed by next week. However, Major Majority Leader Barkley declined to com commit himself. Asked if he had decided on night sessions, he said, not definitely. Barkley saying the administration is not taking signs. But, of course, we don't want the Senate tied up indefinitely. Leon Bloom, the leader of the dominant Socialist Party, accepted the task of forming a government after he had blocked the efforts of Georges Bonnet to end France's three-day-old cabinet crisis. Bloom, who headed France's first People's Front government, was called in by President Albert Lebrun immediately after Bonnet, radical socialist financier and diplomat, had been forced by socialist opposition to give up the task. Fifty Japanese bombing planes disrupted Canton's railway traffic over the weekend by intensified assaults, especially on the Canton to Hankow line. Trains from Hankow were held up for 24 hours while workmen repaired bridges, trestles, and trackage. Japan reportedly continuing to carry out a major readjustment of her diplomatic policy toward the U.S. and other world powers along the lines of her proclaimed objective, pac uh, pacification of Eastern Asia. 
before, ministry said to have issued a circular cablegram to Japanese diplomats instructing them to explain Japan's intentions in their war on China. Dr. H. H. Kung, China's second most powerful leader, declared all current talk of Chinese-Japanese peace, which apparently is inspired by Tokyo and Berlin, is utterly baseless. Characterizing the Ludlow Amendment recently defeated in the lower house of Congress as fallacious and foolhardy, Daniel J. Doherty of Woburn, Massachusetts, National Commander of the American Legion, has declared that adequate defense is now the most vital question confronting the nation. Uh, Arriving unheralded at Albert Witted Airport from Nashville, Tennessee, aboard a National Airlines transport plane to spend several days with Mrs. Doherty, who is a guest at the Princess Martha Hotel. The Legion's number one man later motored to Bradenton, Florida, to address delegates assembled for the 6th Florida District Conference. 55-year-old John Rio, former Lindhurst, New Jersey metal lather, sought by Inspector Harold R. King for questioning in connection with the motiveless slaying of two Long Island women found in New York City. Detectives seized the short, stocky man, also known as John Riovich, after a woman at the 15th Street rooming house in which he had lived for several weeks notified police of his whereabouts. She had seen his picture in the newspapers. Boris Shumanovsky was disclosed to have been removed as head of the Soviet motion picture industry, partly because of efforts to inject political propaganda and sex interest in a production of Treasure Island. The newspaper Soviet Art said Shumanovsky, long under fire for extravagance and failure to fulfill production schedules, had met with poor success in giving political touches to the Robert Louis Stevenson adventure classic. And the National Broadcasting Company today acknowledged a denunciation by the Federal Communications Commission of the Adam and Eve skit of December 12th with the statement that we agree with the high principles of broadcasting as laid down by the commission. At the same time, Lennox R. Lohr, president of the broadcasting company, reiterated his letter contending the skit featuring Mae West was a human error in judgment. The commission, in a rebuke made public yesterday, denounced the broadcast as far below the minimum of standards which should control in the selection and production of broadcast programs. And though some of the day's top news stories is reported in the newspapers of Sunday, January 16th, 1938, on your radio, Dr. Christian, which continues now on Classic Radio Theater. It's all arranged for you to quit next spring. You and Bill Conway uh, arranged yes. it? Yes, uh-huh. Well, I'm glad you told me about it. But that isn't all. Oh, the... there's some more. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> now that you got me out of a job, possibly you made some arrangement about, uh, about how I'll manage to eat. Oh, please don't joke about it. I'm serious. Before Bill and I left the city yesterday afternoon, we had a long talk with Bill's father. There's to be a medical commission appointed in Washington next spring, and you're to be the head of it. You'll be supplied with a secretary, who'll be me... And you'll have Wait. The... Wait a minute here. A medical commission? Mm-hmm. To make a three-year study of medical care for the common people. It's right in your line. Senator Conway said so himself, because they want a man who's had actual experience and, and knows the problems of both the doctor and the public. With your experience, you're just the man. And you'll have an office in Washington, D.C., and... And leave Riversand? Huh? No. That's impossible. Why is it impossible? Well, uh, I... You see, I... Uh, I see, you can't think of one good reason. Well, I'll have to give up my practice here. Oh, there'll be other doctors on the commission. They'll have to give up theirs, too, if they can do it. Oh, well, it's it's out of the question, Judy. Oh. oh, you shouldn't have bothered the senator with it. He was tickled to death to think you'd even consider it. Oh, please, Dr. Christian. Don't you see this is your one big chance? Oh, but I can't. Oh, don't, don't say no. At least wait till Bill comes and talk it over with him. He's on his way now. He phoned me from a service station. He'd be here in ten minutes. Now, just wait until... Well, you like taking a beating at checkers this evening, Doc? No, I don't, Roy. No, I... I've got something to think about. Dr. Christian's going to be appointed head of a medical commission in Washington. What's that? Senator Conway's going to recommend him. Well, say, this is news. In Washington, eh? Yeah, but, but, but I'm not going to accept. Oh, nonsense. Tremendous honor. You must accept. You'll be a national figure, making a marvelous reputation. <laughs> May I come in? Oh, yes, yes. Come in. Come in, Mr. Conway. Hello, Judy. Hello. Uh, Mr. Conway, Mr. Davis. Uh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. Davis? Bill's father is Senator Conway. Oh, yes. 
Well, Mr. Conway, your father is recommending a fine man for the National Medical Commission. I'm sure of that. In fact, when we mentioned Dr. Christian to Dad, he, he seemed to know all about him. Well, Doctor, is everything all set? Well, I... I don't know. It's, it's been kind of sudden. Sure, it's all set. Giving up my practice here, well, it's not going to be so easy. It's... But you'll have plenty of time to make plans. The commission won't meet until spring. Well, I'll have to think it over. Oh, of course. And if there are any difficulties Dad can iron out for you, I'm sure you'll be glad to do it, because he's counting on you. There won't be any difficulties. Well, confidentially, I'm counting on him, too. You see, I want Judy in Washington when I'm there next spring. So my motives are purely selfish. Ah, uh -huh. well, we'll be there. This is one time when I... Christian! Why, Joey! The ice jam up the river's broken. What? Oh. The river's a torrent, still rising. The bottomland's already flooded. They're getting people out of the houses now. You'd better hurry. Uh, where to take them? Most of them to the Powell's place. But if the river keeps rising, that's going to be flooded, too. Was anyone drawn? I don't know. Wait till I get my kid. And, uh, Roy, you and Judy better come along, too. All right. We need all the help you can get. Where's that raincoat you brought me, Jerry? I've got it out in the car. Is your car outside? Yeah. All right, I'll meet you there. I'm going back to the store to get some bandages and things. Well, hurry, Roy. All right, now. I'll go along with you. You, Conway? Now, you better not. You might get your clothes muddy. All the same, I think I'll go. All right, that's swell. We'll stick right together. Because as soon as we're through, I've got something to say to you. From 84 years ago, January 16th, 1938, Dr. Christian. The conclusion next on this Sunday Classic Radio Theater. What does it mean to be an American? Just what are our American values? Working hard to succeed. Loving God, country, and family. Being honest, strong, and compassionate. Supporting our Constitution and recognizing that we are blessed to be living in America, the greatest country in the world. Our Bill of Rights protects us, our freedoms of worship, speech, and privacy, our right to own firearms, our right to trial by jury. Our right to be free, to live our own lives without some bureaucrat telling us what to do. Most countries don't have these rights. Want to know more? It's all there in the book. Get your own free book, The U.S. Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Then read it again, and this time, share it with your friends. Our great Constitution is the basis of all of our freedoms, our inalienable rights. Get your own copy at freeusbook.com. Brought to you by the American Media Council. On Monday's Classic Radio Theater, Net Weber, starring as Bulldog Drummond in an episode from January 17, 1947, The Claim Check on Death, a $1,000 bill and a parcel claim check, lead Captain Bulldog Drummond and Denny to the trail of a fortune in stolen radium. That's coming up on Monday's Classic Radio Theater, but now the conclusion of Dr. Christian, starring Gene Herschold from January 16th, 1938, 84 years ago today. Here comes the car now. It's dark, all right. I guess we got here ahead of him. Hey, Doc! Doc! Is Judy with you, Doc? Yes, Judy and Conway. You better have a look at Jim Morgan here. What's the matter with Jim? It's my hand, Doc. He was trying to get our furniture out, and I mashed it between the box I was carrying and the door. Come on, you guys. We gotta get the stock out of the barn. We can open the door. Come over here, here by the headlights of the car, Jim. All right, Doc. Let me take a look at it. Anything I can do, Dr. Christian? Yes. Get me my kid. And, and tell Judy that I want those bandages. All right. Now, let's see, Jim. Oh, gosh, it sure hurts, Doc. Yes, you did a good job matching that hand. Why, why didn't you dress it for him? He wouldn't let me touch it. Wanted you to look at it. Here you are, Dr. Christian. Thanks. Now, this might hurt a little bit, Jim. I guess I can stand it, Doc. Oh. Oh, Doc. Oh. Yes, I know it burns a little, but it'll stop in a minute. Oh. Bandages. Yes, here. It's a good thing you come along, Doc. But it seems like you're always around when a fella needs you. <laughs> Does it feel better now? Yeah. Yeah, a lot better. Roy, you finish this bandaging, will you? I'd better go down over to the Powell's. All right, I'll see you there after a while. Hop in the car, you kids. Okay. And Jim, drop into my office tomorrow. I will, Doc. <laughs>
Christian. I knew you'd come. Sure, we'll get everything all straightened out. Sure, we've lost everything. Everything. Oh, now I don't think it'll be as bad as all that. We've had floods before, and they haven't done such an oh. awful lot of damage. Henry wasn't there when the water started to come up. I didn't know what to do. Well, did Henry get there at all? Yes, and brought some men with him. They're still there again. Oh, then they'll take care of everything. <laughs> It'd take quite a little while for the water to get up into your house. They'd have plenty of time to move the furniture and things upstairs. And it's never gotten as high as you upstairs. No, that, that's right, isn't it? Well, you'll have to do a lot of scrubbing and cleaning after the water goes down, but I'll bet you'll find you got off pretty easy. Oh, I don't care how much work there'll be for me. Oh, well, there you are. Nothing's happened that can't be cured by a little hard work. Anything else I can do, Dr. Christian? Uh, did you put some water on to boil? Yes. Well, go and tell Judy that I... Help him in here. Right over this way. Uh, the barn collapsed, Doc. You got caught under some timbers. I had a double of a time getting Oh, out. he's dead. He's dead. No, he isn't. Who put the bandits on his leg? I did. He was bleeding pretty bad. I took his shirt and tied it up. Can't wait. Get me a basin of hot water. All right. Bring him in here. Now, take it easy, old man. <clears throat> right here, Doctor. Yes. Put him under bed. Jerry, go out to my car and see if there's another roll of uh, bandages. If there isn't, look for Roy Davis. He's got some in his car. Okay. Is this enough water, Dr. Christian? Yes, put it there. The rest of you clear out. Yeah? Uh, just outside. Eh? Okay, Doc. All right. Smooth it out a little. You've got to work fast. He's bleeding badly. I think he's coming, too. Well, it would have been a lot better if they had put on a tourniquet instead of this bandage. Press your fingers just above the bandage. Right there. Press hard. Oh. Now, just hold it till I... Oh. Oh, it's you, Doc. Hello, Sam. Certainly, certainly glad to see you. Yes, I guess you're going to need a few repairs. Well, you're... You're the fellow who can make them. Leg isn't... Isn't broken, is it? No. No, but it's going to give you a little twinge when I put this clamp on. You go ahead, Doc. You know what to do. Now, try and relax, and it'll be much easier. Could I... Could I have a cigarette, Doc? Sure. Here's one. Thanks. Now, I won't hurt you any more than I have to. I know you won't, Doc. We'll get all ready first. Now, try and think of something else. You think of the time that you and I went fishing. Remember that day? Yeah. <laughs> you were sitting there in the boat with your line in the water. Not paying very much attention. All of a sudden, you've got a bite. A big small Snap on the lights, Judy. All right. Well, here we are. Back where we started from. Oh, oh, your clothes, Bill. That suits a sight. Yeah, it's kind of muddy, isn't it? If you haven't all the qualifications for a first-class tram. You might take a peek in the mirror yourself. Huh? Is that streak of soot across your face for adornment or purely utilitarian? <laughs> oh, heavens. <laughs> well, this has been quite an experience for me, Dr. Christian. Do they have floods often? Oh, no. The last one was four or five years ago. But there's always something to keep life interesting. I imagine. You see, the ice jams up in the river, and then, if there's a sudden thaw, it lets loose a lot of water all at once. It was this warm rain that started it. You suppose there was much damage done? Oh, not a great deal. If you weren't careful, most of the damage would come afterwards. Typhoid, flu, pneumonia, and but so But Dr. On. Christian's like the Marines. He always has the situation well in hand. How about that fellow Carson? Will he get all right? Oh, sure. I'll have to keep my eye on him for a while to see that infection doesn't set in, but he'll be all right. Well, I guess we might as well call it a day. I'll have to get up early in the morning. Is uh, Mr. Conway taking you home, Judy? Oh, he has such a long drive to the city, I think I'd... Better... I think I'll stay at the hotel tonight. Phone in tomorrow morning and have some clothes sent out. Mm -hmm. Good night, and 
Thanks for help. Oh, uh, Dr. Christian, I don't want to influence your decision about that appointment, but, but maybe Judy and I have been wrong. Why, Bill? Oh, what? I don't mean it the way you think, Judy, but, but I realize tonight how much these people need him and depend on him, how much confidence they have in him. You're right, Dr. Christian. It's not going to be easy to give up your practice. No, but then as Judy pointed out, there'll be other doctors in the commission... They'll have to give up theirs. And Dr. Christian's made plenty of sacrifices for them already. He's had offers before. This isn't the first one. And he's always stayed on. And... Yes, now that I have a little time to make arrangements... Yes, then... he won't be exactly running out on his patients. This offer's too big to turn down. What do you think, Dr. Christian? Yes, it is too big to turn down. And he's entitled to do more important work. Only I wonder if there is anything more important than taking care of those who need you. Well, you know best, Dr. Christian. I saw the lights on, so... So I figured you were still up. Oh, hello, Turner. I hoped you would show up. Didn't you want to say something to me? Yeah. Jerry, uh... Now, what's the matter? But I've changed my mind. I've got you all wrong, Conway. I had you doped out as a... Well, never mind about that. But after the way you pitched in and helped tonight, you're okay. Well, well, thanks. Uh... Say, wait. Gee, I wasn't jealous, was he? Sure, and I still am. But anyway, from now on, Conway, it'll be a case of the best man wins. What do you say? <laughs> okay oh, by me. Oh, shake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'm going to get the brakes, Turner, because I'll be in Washington next spring, just about the time Judy and Dr. Christian arrive there. Washington? No. No, it'll be Jerry who gets the brakes, because next spring, Judy and Dr. Christian will be doing business at the same old stand. You're not going? No. But I thought you decided to accept. Well, if he doesn't, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going... Oh, well, I'll go right on working for him. <laughs> What's all this about? <laughs> well, yeah, I had a sort of a notion that maybe the time had come to leave River's End. Mr. Conway talked me into it and then talked me out of it again. So I guess that leaves me right here where I am. Gene Hersholt, who appears on this program through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, will be back next Sunday afternoon with another delightful Dr. Christian story. We hope you will all listen in. This is Arthur Gilmore bidding you good afternoon for the makers of Vaseline Preparations. From January 16th, 1938, Dr. Christian, here on Classic Radio Theater. And Gene Herschel did such a wonderful job in that show that it continued from 1938 into the 50s until his passing of cancer. Thank you so much for joining us here on Classic Radio Theater. Would you do us a favor and visit our webpage, classicradio.stream? There you can stream our shows on demand. You can get all of our social media contact information. You can contact me directly. And you can uh, learn more about building a classic radio collection of your own. Classicradio.stream. Uh, don't forget that our shows are also available all over the Internet. Uh, you can find them on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, Apple Podcast. You can also find them uh, uh, through the uh, Amazon Podcast app, Audible. Just search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Have yourself a great day, won't you please? I'm Wyatt Cox. Tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater on your favorite radio station.